make it, make it, do it Makes us harder, better, faster, stronger Not, not, not that, that don't kill me it Can only make us stronger What up, peeps? So we're back with the first stronger vlog in about a year and a half. So I've been pretty, I've been pretty good and consistent with them. Uh, Things have changed slightly since the last one. Uh, we got old Curly over here has joined us as my new training partner. Say hello. Say hello. Uh, <laughs> so I decided to bring these back purely for my own selfish benefit. I don't give a shit really who watches them. I don't think many people will anyway. But I found when I was doing these last time, ah, I don't bite my arm. It kept me accountable a bit better in my training. And I figured leading into my first uh, INBA, or sorry, ICN bodybuilding comp in about a year's time, um, this will give me a good way to track the journey. So when I want to look back on it later, um, it'll be fun to watch. Um, so we're going to go over a training session today. It's my sort of torso day I guess you'd say so targeting lats chest and then a little bit of biceps and shoulders at the end um, I tend to vary the way I split my program fairly often but I don't tend to go for the full-on single body part bro splits like chest day arms day this and that so I find that particularly for a natural competitor it works a lot better if you are giving each body part sort of more frequent um, exposure to anabolic stimuluses. So say you're training your biceps, if you do an arms day once a week and then maybe you do a back day, you might hit the biceps twice in that week. Whereas if you spread your upper body's days around a little bit, um, you can hit the arms directly and indirectly a little bit more often. So we end up getting more frequency on those body parts. So that's the way I've got my current program split. We've got the days um, fairly mixed between pushing and pulling and then a few isolation type exercises. Um, nothing too complex with regards to rep ranges or anything. Uh, <laughs> this guy takes after his mother. <laughs> yeah, nothing too complex with regards to rep ranges, but my focus points uh, for this program are lats, biceps and quads. Uh, so you'll notice over the training week that over these next sort of series of videos um, that those are the body parts that I tend to hit most frequently um, and I find that that's a great way to bring up weak points in your physique from a sort of either strength or bodybuilding perspective rather than just hitting them really hard one day a week finding ways to stimulate them more often throughout the week um, without over exhausting them using a few different methods so enjoy the video How's yeah, this guy, by the way? What a pest. Mm. That's what I think. I think... <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a great start to the video. I already got the day mixed up. It's actually shoulders and arms day. My son bit me on the face during a wrestle between takes. So you can see this day's gone pretty good. You. Alrighty, so we're kicking off this workout. I've got a little tricep, which is where I pair three exercises together. The first two are both for shoulders. So what I've got here is a bent over lateral raise. Uh, what I'm trying to do with this little combo is basically what's called pre-exhausting a certain muscle, which means I'm targeting the rear delt here with a isolation movement. Not much weight, doesn't. it's not really that difficult. More of a focus on contracting the right muscles and getting them burning slightly. So I think I've got about nine reps on this one. And then what I'm doing is standing straight up, moving over to the rack, and then moving into what we call a compound exercise, which is one where you're using multiple joints um, and therefore utilizing more weight, activating more overall musculature. So the benefit of doing this combo where I'm going from a rear delt, oh, sorry, a bent over lateral raise into a behind the neck press is that I'm pre-exhausting the muscles that I want to target, getting them burning a little bit so that when I move into this uh behind the neck press, I can feel them working a lot more. If you're gonna try this movement, make sure you have plenty of shoulder flexibility. If you're unable to get your elbows straight under the bar with straight wrists, uh, you'll find it can put a lot of pressure on the arm. And then what I'm moving into is alternating standing dumbbell curls, so the old classic row exercise. One tip with your curls, 
Start from full extension, so your arm fully bent. You'll notice through the first 90 degrees, my elbow stays locked at the side because this is the primary function of the biceps muscle is to flex the elbow. But then the last little bit, I'll let that elbow creep forward. And that's because there's a secondary function of your biceps is to assist in shoulder flexion. So if you're trying to really stimulate them optimally, we're looking to contract the muscle and bend sort of through that first half of the movement, about 90 degrees. And then you can complete the movement by letting your elbows creep forward just a little bit. Um, this will allow you to get a bit more activation. Just make sure you don't swing the elbows forward too early or you end up doing those straight up epic bro reps where you're using momentum to curl it rather than your actual muscle. So the way I've set this little tri set up is we go back to back those two shoulder movements because we want to get that activation of the rear delt and then really stimulate it with the behind the neck press. About a 45 second rest is usually optimal after that. And then I move into my curls and about another minute rest before I go back through it. So this current training phase that I'm in is more volume driven, meaning that I'm not doing a lot of low rep, really heavy sort of stuff, um, which I suppose you'd say is more of a typical bodybuilder-ish type approach. Um, I find that particularly as a natural competitor or drug-free competitor for people who don't sort of follow the scene, um, that it becomes a lot more necessary to mix up your rep ranges in sort of a structured, controlled way and periodize, that's what they call it when you plan out your training in the longer term, so break it into smaller blocks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever they might be. Um, so they call those mesocycles. So create a bunch of mesocycles where you're varying intensity brackets, you're varying exercise choice rep ranges in sort of controlled, structured way and actually incorporating more strength style training into your program. If you look at any of the elite bodybuilders in the world, um, and Australia's got a couple of really good ones, um, they're all really, really fucking strong. It's very difficult to continue to build muscle mass if you plateau in strength levels. So these guys have sort of worked out that you need to mix together elements of sort of power lifting with elements of bodybuilding and oftentimes unconventional strength sort of things using other implements, strong man, um, hammers, calisthenics, anything like that. It becomes important to mix these things in as part of your training. Otherwise, you're probably gonna plateau if you stick within that sort of bro range, that four by eight to 12 or three by 12 to 15, and just keep doing the same shit over and over. Steroided guys can sometimes get away with doing that because they've got such a potent anabolic stimulus in their body. A natural sort of guy, we don't have that advantage, so we need to find ways to be smarter about our training in the longer term to make sure we don't stagnate. All right, next up, we've got some time under tension doubles, which is where we're doing two reps of the curl, holding at the top while the other arm repeats, meaning that you don't have to use as much weight and we're keeping a lot of tension on the biceps. You'll notice that I'm also doing a good job of tap dancing and dodging Lennox while he attacks my feet while I do my curls. Classic baby behavior. And then beyond that, we're moving into seated lateral raises with the dumbbells, which means you get to have a look at the heaps good faces I pull while I do lateral raises. Sexy. Um, big thing with these that I'm focusing on, not so much weight. If you use too much weight on your laterals, you tend to shrug into them while you're doing it. So the key focus for me when I do these is keeping my palms down and keeping the shoulders down and relaxed so we're not shrugging up and using the neck muscles. Um, you also find it's very important to banter with people about Chelsea Football Club winning yet another game on the weekend, which is what I'm doing in the middle of my workout here because, you know, intensity, bro. Next up, after about three or four sets of that combo, I move into a French press with the cable. Again, you'll notice throughout this set, I'm dodging Lennox because this time he decided it was a good idea to bite me on my knees while I was doing it. Um, I like this variation quite a bit because it puts a really good stretch on your triceps, having that high elbow type position. Um, and you'll find that if you look through one of our older posts on the Stronger page, um, I did a post about how elbow position in relation to the body can drastically change the activation of which head of the triceps you're using. Um, so that's why I switched that up. And then that's it for the videos. I finished the workout after that with a bicep curl drop set with the cable. I use the cable because it's very little stress on the elbows um, and it's easy to set up the drop set. So this workout overall, not too brutal, not too overly intense, not heaps of weight used. We're focusing more on volume and more on activating the right muscles, particularly with the biceps exercises I chose. And that's mainly just because um, I've got a lot of rowing, a lot of heavy pulls in this program. And I find if we put too much in, you get a lot of elbow pain. <laughs>